Welcome back. So in the last lecture, we showed that for relatively large n and moderate probabilities, the binomial distribution starts to converge to the normal distribution. Um, remember that the binomial distribution is, you know, like how you would count successes in a bunch of independent trials. If I flip, you know, 100 coins, what's the probability, um, you know, of getting a certain number of heads? The number of heads in 100 coin tosses is a binomially distributed variable. And when n is large, that starts to converge to the normal distribution. And just to remind you, the normal distribution is the standard kind of uh, Gaussian that we're used to seeing. So this is going to converge to a Gaussian with mean mu. Okay, so this is uh, kind of just a normal Gaussian, normal distribution with mean u. And this standard deviation, this uh, sigma, is essentially going to measure the spread of this Gaussian. So if I have um, a large sigma, I'm going to have a more spread out PDF. So this is, you know, large sigma, and this one is a small sigma. Okay, so that tells you kind of how broad the distribution is. Okay, so, um, you know, if you look at the distribution of uh, SAT scores going into Harvard, well, that's first off, it's not normal, but it also probably is a pretty narrow standard deviation. Okay, actually, I'm not sure they take SAT scores anymore. Um, but a good example of a normal distribution would be something like the height um, of Americans um, or, you know, the number of heads given 100 coin flips or, you know, something like that. And you can have a large variance or a small variance. The standard deviation squared, sigma squared, is often called uh, the variance or var of x, okay? And big variance means a lot of spread. Small variance, small standard deviation means you have a very narrow peaked distribution, which means you're very likely to be pretty close to that mean value. So if everything is super close to the mean, you have a, a small standard deviation. Okay, so I mentioned last time that it's easier to compute uh, basic probabilities down here in this normal distribution down here. I'm going to take a little tiny aside and I'm just going to give you some properties and facts of the normal distribution. And then we're going to talk about how to calculate some basic probabilities that you might want to compute uh, for these distributions, but using this normal distribution. Okay, um, I'm going to kind of show you the old fashioned way of like, you know, how I learned it. And then I'll tell you how to do this with a modern computer in Python. Okay, so this normal distribution is parameterized by two things. There is the mean mu and the standard deviation uh, squared, sigma squared here. And what I want to do is I want to show you what this normal distribution looks like in the kind of standard unit normal. So uh, we literally call this the standard um, unit normal. Sometimes we call this, you know, the, the Gaussian distribution, the normal distribution. And this is where mu equals zero and sigma equals one. And this is kind of the canonical Gaussian. When you think of a Gaussian, this is like the normalized standard uh, normal distribution or Gaussian distribution where everything is centered around uh, x equals zero and the spread is exactly equal to one. The amount of spread has been normalized so my standard deviation is equal to one. And so the way I would draw this, um, again, we're looking at probability density functions, the probability of x being at some value. Um, so that probability is going to look uh, like this. I'm just going to draw some things and tell you some facts. Uh, my bell curve or my, my probability distribution is going to look kind of like this. And it's symmetric. This is a symmetric function, symmetric about the mean. Uh, and this is, I'm going to give this thing some units. This is my probability. And this is my variable uh, x down here. This is called the PDF the probability density functions, the probability. And if you really want to be careful, what we would actually do is we would actually um, take this distribution and we would look at the probability of being at X plus some little delta X or DX. And you would have this, this is a continuous distribution. So there's like an infinitesimal probability. And so to compute the probability between, um, 
you know, two values, the probability that x is between negative 1 and 1, for example, you would have to integrate this probability density function from negative 1 to 1. Okay, and in fact, I'm actually just going to write that down. So uh, the probability that uh, x is between negative 1 and 1 is equal to the integral uh, of my, my probability density function. Sometimes we actually call this uh, lowercase f because this is a continuous probability density function. Um, so sometimes we would call it little f, and it's the integral from negative 1 to 1 of f of x dx. So literally, if I took this function here, this f of x, and I integrated it from negative 1 to 1, I would get the probability that x is between negative 1 and 1. Okay? Um, the integral of this probability density function is often called the cumulative density function. So PDF is probability density function. CDF is the cumulative density function. And it's literally just the integral of f of x dx from negative infinity to x. Okay, that's what this uh, value here is. This is sometimes we call it capital F. Sometimes we call it um, big phi. Uh, for the standard unit normal, it's actually called big phi, this cumulative distribution. And it starts off at, at zero, and it eventually goes up to one. Because the cumulative, the probability, um, you know, way out here at x equals negative infinity is zero. And the probability of me being less than x increases as I go to the right and to the right. The probability, this is literally the probability that big X is less than or equal to little x, that's this cumulative distribution function. And it will eventually, I'm going to try to draw this as well as I can, it'll eventually converge to 1. Okay, And it hits its middle point exactly when my Gaussian has its peak, uh, its peak um, probability. So this cumulative distribution function tells me what's the probability that x is less than a certain number, and it's adding up all of the probabilities that x equals this number, this number, this number, this number, this number, up to that, uh, that point there. Okay? Um, and for the standard unit normal, we give this thing a name, we call it phi. And so, for example, this uh, probability that x is greater than negative 1 and less than 1 is this integral from negative uh, 1 to 1. And this is actually defined uh, as phi, the cumulative distribution of 1, minus the cumulative distribution, uh, the, the CDF of minus 1. And in the olden days, in the Stone Ages, when I was learning statistics, you would have to go to your clay tablets and look up these values. Someone chipped them in uh, in cuneiform, and you had to go look up these numbers in a tablet. And it was only tabulature, it was only written down and, and recorded for this standard unit normal distribution. So if I had a normal distribution with a different mean and a different standard deviation, I would have to kind of warp or distort it into the standard unit normal. Then I could use my lookup tables, again, clay tablets, and then I could retranslate those back to probabilities over here. Now, this is like trivial in computers. You can get the CDF of this normal distribution that is not mean zero standard deviation one. It can have any mean and any standard deviation. And the CDF, the cumulative distribution of this, that's just a you know one line Python command. So in like scipy.stats, you have all of the tools to compute um, these cumulative distribution functions. And so you can compute the probability that X is between A and B. And I'm just gonna write that out. Like the probability for a generic uh, normal, the probability that you know x is between a and b, again, it's just the integral from a to b of my probability density function, which, you know, for a generic mu and sigma is this function here. Really, if I was being careful, I would say that this is, you know, uh, how do I actually want to write this? So this is the probability, this f of x. Um, this is the probability that x equals little x. This is the infinitesimal probability that f, uh, the x, that, that my random variable equals some value little x.
Okay, good. Um, and you can actually compute this probability. This one is relatively easy um, to compute using these standard normals. I think it's something like 68%. Um, this is about 68 percent chance that if you randomly drew a normal variable, you would be between negative one and one um, standard deviation. So that's kind of what standard deviation means is, you know, if you're in the middle of the distribution, if you're in the middle 68% of the distribution, you're within one standard deviation. You could compute what the probability of being within two standard deviations are. You would just replace this one by a two. And uh, that's actually a good homework problem for you, is what are the chances you're within, you know, two standard deviations uh, of the mean in a normal distribution? And this kind of answers the age-old question, am I normal? Uh, you can compute if you're normal. You can compute your height relative to the distribution. You can compute your weight relative to the distribution or lots of other things, um, you know, to see if you're normal, okay? Um, I think that if you want to do a shorthand of this, um, I'll just tell you that phi of 1 is about 0.841, something like that. This is, again, from those clay lookup tables. And that would be the probability of being to the left of 1. So that would be, that would be um, all phi of 1, the cumulative distribution, is the integral from negative infinity to one of my PDF. So that's the probability of being left of x equals one, of being less than one. This is the probability that big X is less than or equal to one. That's this thing here. And by symmetry, you can argue that this remainder over here is about 16%, which means that this symmetric part over here that we don't wanna be counting is also about 16%. And if you subtract that, you get your 68%. So work through this, kind of figure this out, um, try this out yourself, try this in Python and compute these things. It's uh, relatively straightforward. But what I want to do is I wanna use this to compute something more tricky. I wanna show you how you can actually use this to compute some really, really nasty probabilities that would be hard to do in binomial using the normal distribution. So let's say that I, uh, I flip a coin uh, 400 times, okay? And the probability P um, is equal to one half, you know, so uh, P equals one half. The number of heads that I expect to get, so number of heads, is we're gonna call that our random variable x, and that is binomial distributed with n equals 400 and p equals one half. So I could compute the probability of x equaling 15. The probability of getting 15 heads, I would take this distribution and I'd plug in k equals 15. I could get that probability, no problem. But it's actually a total mess to compute something like the following. Let's say I want to compute the probability that x is that I get at least 190 heads. So I get at least 190 heads and no more than 230 heads. This is a monster to compute using the binomial distribution. So what you would have to do is you would have to actually add up all of these cases. The probability that, that I get between 190 and 230 heads is the probability that x equals exactly 190 plus the probability that x equals exactly 191 plus dot 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 plus the probability that x equals exactly 229 plus the probability that x equals exactly 230. And I'd have to add up all 51 of these probabilities, which each is kind of a nightmare to compute. So I'd be adding up all of these terms. It would be a big mess. Yes, on a computer I could do it, but it's still just like messy and ugly. Okay, so instead what we do is we use the normal distribution. We say, well, okay, we know what the mean is here. So X is very approximately normal with mean 200. I expect 200 heads with mean 200 and standard deviation squared of 400 times one half times one half, um, which is 100. So this means that uh, this is sigma squared. So sigma equals 10 and mu equals 200. 
And so I can, you know, draw this normal distribution. It's going to have a mean of 200. It's going to have a pretty narrow spread. I'm actually going to expect to get, you know, plus or minus 10 uh, heads within about 68% of the time. Um, so that gives you some, some rough estimate there. And what I would do now is I can compute the, the cumulative distribution, the integral. I can use the psi pi dot stat uh, cumulative distribution function, or I can warp this into standard normal and use these phi functions. I can go find my clay tablets and use my lookups. But basically what I'm going to do is find the area of this PDF between 190 and 230. And I can compute what that area is. And if I use my, you know, clay lookup tables, or if I go to Python and I uh, use the cumulative distribution function in scipy.stats, you're going to find that there's something like an 85 uh, percent chance that you are between 190 and 230 uh, heads for this coin flip. Okay, um, that was a lot, but I, I hope what I convinced you of is that the normal distribution is interesting and there's lots of things you can compute about it. This cumulative distribution tells you the probability um, that x is less than some, some value. Um, you can derive things pretty quickly like the you expect to be within one standard deviation of the mean 68% of the time. And you can use that to compute things like the number of heads being between 190 and 230 out of 400 coin flips. It's way easier to compute these two numbers, you know, phi of 230 and phi of 190, than it is to add up all of these exact binomial probabilities. This is a mess. This is way, 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 way easier to compute. And you're going to get a lot of intuition for what it means to be within one standard deviation or two standard deviations um, pretty quickly. You'll build a lot of intuition, and it's a lot easier to work in these uh, kind of Gaussian normal distribution coordinates. Okay, thank you.